Pow! <laughs> hey guys, hope uh, everyone is uh, having a good week so far. I'm just uh, making sure I'm not uh, coming through the uh, speakers here. So far, so good. It's got a we're using a new machine, so it's going to be uh, kind of touch and go for the first five minutes here. See how we're doing. And uh, thanks for stopping by another uh, Tasty Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm really thirsty too. <laughs> We're going to uh, be taking a look at a couple uh, fun ones here. Um, going to be start starting off with a Tamdu uh, Tamdu 10, and then uh, second hour we'll be looking at the old Tamdu 15. So that should be uh, pretty fun, I have to say. And uh, glad that you guys got a chance to stop by. I really appreciate it. Sorry to miss last week. I uh, had some um, unfortunate uh, blood tests that I had. forgot I had to get done for just routine health check stuff. All the numbers were good, so I'm happy about that. Hey, Whiskey Ace, good to see you, man. Um, so uh, no uh, no scares or anything. Just uh, forgot I had to do some routine things. And, and it's funny, I, I've been putting it off because of this COVID nightmare. And I thought, well, they had, I had a chance the following day. It was my birthday on the 14th, which is really sad to get up, have to get up at 5.30, 6 in the morning, to go to the doctor to give blood and get a flu shot on your birthday. But what the hell, right? <laughs> Someone's got to do it. So uh, thankfully got it done. So I'm happy, you know, at least happy that uh, I don't have to worry about that piece of it, you know, it's, there's enough to worry about, and lot enough going on as it is. What are you guys sipping? Hey, Cohen, good to see you. How's, uh, I think you're in California, if I remember correctly. Whiskey Ace, I can't remember where you were, um, but hopefully either way you're, you're doing well. What are you guys warming up with? I decided, just for giggles, I was going to, um, and I'm not going to give any notes away yet, because we're going to do a show uh, about finding the uh, the lost good Jura but uh, I'm starting off just warming up with a, a Jura 10 just to get the juices flowing. Nothing crazy special, nothing fancy, you know. Peter says all I can get is a virtual doctor appointment. I hear you there, man. It's uh, That's probably for the best. That's the reason why I really haven't gone in to see anybody in for ages because I don't like taking chances just even going outside that much unless I'm just going to a park with my radio, you know staying by myself. Hey, good to see you, Servalock. Uh, always good to see you. I saw that you recently did a distiller review. I forgot what it was. It was something I recently tasted, too, that I was going to ask you about. Man, what was it? It might have been the Tamdu f- f- was it the Tamdu 15 or something else? Might have been something else. But uh, we'll get into that uh, a little later on. Hey, Daniel, good to see you. Gary K, good to see you as well. Del Mango, just let the screen with Malt. Yeah, we're going to be doing a couple more hours. It'll be fun. Thanks for stopping by. Just poured uh, 15 as well. Yeah, definitely let that sit for 15 min- minutes minimum, I would say. Uh, it's on this way to Kelly. On Ocean City. Ocean City? No. Ocean County. Ca- Orange County. I th- See, when I, when I hear OC, if you're a Marylander, you, you instantly think Ocean City. As a Californian, you probably think Orange County, I'm, I'm assuming. That's a complete guess, though. Speaking of, let me send... Uh, Malta's invite for the old show and uh, so far so good on this new laptop I'm having uh, fun with uh, making sure everything's working well I was looking up a little information about Tamdu uh, before the show and not really a whole lot I mean they've been around for a long time 1897 I think and um, just you know they've been kicking it for a long long time they did have a like a short gap of uh, 2010 to 2012 it looks like but uh, they've been they've been kicking it for quite a long time. Yeah, Orange County. That's that's what I thought. Good to see you after a couple of weeks. Uh, TMD fifteen. Good things. Hear great things about it. But it does such a ridiculous box. Yeah, I'll be talking about that here in a little bit too. That'll uh, that'll be fun. V, I support you, comrade. <laughs> you too, man. Uh, where are you from? Just out of curiosity. Uh, having a pour of uh Wurt. 49 Wellington, 19 years, solid Canadian four grain blend. Wow, that's very particular. I've, I'm not a huge grain fan, but it sounds intriguing. Um, I definitely want to, you know, give anybody, uh, 
any uh, offering at chance at least never uh, look down on it right away home of high times <laughs> Since you're asking up for it, some Highland Park Valkyrie a few minutes before in a mall show, but I have no clue how it scored how it was scored in '99. Uh, whose uh, score was the '99? I'm curious. Is that a Distiller score or is that like a Ralphie score? Um, I think it's good, but I was a little disappointed by the finish of the Valkyrie. I did like the espresso notes you got out of it. I thought it was a very different Holland Park than your typical Jill. Um, I did I did enjoy it almost as much as the Valknut, but the uh, the Valknut had more of a nutty twist to it. Had it in the in the Valfather, the end was the best, I thought, because it had a really nice amount of heavy peat that uh, drove it home. Um, but I think as an intro, the Valkyrie, you know, was was pretty solid, you know, for being the intro. The, uh, yeah, smash that like button. I appreciate it. Hey, good to see you, Donner. <laughs> yeah, he's drinking some Canadian stuff. I think he's speaking Canadian or, or Canuck. Oh, Pennsylvania, that's close by. Speaking of Pennsylvania, close by. <laughs> Got him off guard again. <laughs> you are so good at that. Good to see you back in the saddle, Alex. How are you, my friend? Pretty good, man. Does everything sound look good? Uh, I'm using a brand different new uh, laptop right now. That's why I was curious. Well, look good is debatable, but it sounds good. <laughs> hey, man. I support, I support my new porky fun. <laughs> you. No, yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, things are well, man. Things are, things are going okay, thanks. Um, how are you? Pretty decent, supporting the new porcupine tree, Fear of a Blank Planet album from uh i think it was 07 it's a classic you gotta get it if you don't have it already i don't <laughs> i do not uh, you ever, you ever yeah. heard of them before yeah i have yeah really really good if you do like progressive kind of stuff uh it's it's one of their best ones and uh yeah it's been a pretty good week but man it's it's been a long deal i was telling them that uh my birthday was last on the 14th oh we happy birthday man when we were going to do the show and uh, had to do the blood test that day, that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's definitely not a, uh, a good situation. You know, yeah, you definitely don't want to, like, fuck that up. I am getting a little bit of audio feedback on your end. Is that, are you hearing that too? I'm not, but I might be able to fix it. Give me one second. Okay, there's like a weird little echo going on. Okay, I think I fixed it. There's an audio can uh, echo cancellation feature. How about that? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that worked. That worked. All right, sorry about that. Yeah, I was playing with it. It had a stereo setting, I thought, that might sound better. And I thought, well, I'll try it. But to turn it on, you had to kill the echo cancellation. And that's what screwed me. So that's what I get for playing with shit, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know how it goes. Um, so what's going on, man? I was just excited to finally, uh, after dealing with all that, and all my numbers were good, so uh, everything was, was, it was just a routine checkup, but I'm, I'm definitely, I was eager for Tasty Tuesday a week ago, and I'm really super eager today to, to yeah, taste definitely. all these fine definitely. goodies. We've definitely, been talking man. about Tamdu for a while, so I'm really eager to, to get into the, uh, the Tamdu. Uh, I've had a... The batches before, like batch one, batch two, batch three. I'm not sure if I've ever dealt with the batch four, but once you've had the first two or three, you kind of know your way around the batches. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. You, are you, I'm, I'm a big fan of those. Are you a big fan of those uh, batches? I've never had any of them. Um, I was oh, talking really? to some folks on the happy hour about it, and they were, you know, singing the praises of these batches. I think Peter White, among others, were, were mentioning that they're really quite good. And so, no, uh, but now I'm intrigued for sure. And I'll tell you this much. Um, I'm pouring the rest of my Tamdu 10 right now uh, to get us ready for our tasting. But, you know, uh, Tamdu is not a distillery that really, you know, was something I found a lot or thought about a lot. I, I remember having a Tamdu 10 at a bar once. Um, it was probably, uh, I want to say... Yeah, like 10, 12 bucks a sh for, a, for a pour. And, you know, I was I was interested in it because I'd never had it. And I, I quite liked it. Um, was it the 10 or 12, do you remember? Uh, it was the 10. And I quite liked it. I was actually pretty impressed. And then, you know, finally I found a bottle. It's not in like the easiest thing to find. 
Um, you know, Tamdu is not just like sitting on the shelf of a, like total wine a lot of times and things like that. And so I came across it, I mean, months ago and finally was just like, you know what, the hell with it. I'm going to pick this up. And yeah, uh, I'm excited to share it with you because I think you will be intrigued by this one. Yeah, the um, the batches are are at cast strength. They do them on a yearly basis. This is like the fourth or fifth year I think they've done it. And uh, if you can get your hands on batch one, that is usually the more preferred one. But by now they're harder to find. They're usually on the auction shelves. You know, like you know, I, you can still find them, but they're really rare. Um, and probably if hopefully you get the hundred and twenty, hundred and ten dollar, you know regular price but don't be surprised if you see a batch one or batch two for like a couple hundred or even more uh I'm not saying it's worth it but it is really really damn good it's definitely at least worth the retail price and uh, yeah. keep your eyes out because I, I have i've had all three and all of them were good uh and i think tmd is one of the more underrated of all distilleries uh types of, of the distilleries that i think a lot of people should get more into yeah uh yeah, definitely. I, I don't disagree with that at all. I this ten has really got me excited about trying your uh, the fifteen sample that you sent because I was just really really impressed with with this one. Um, and I don't know if you're ready, we could uh, we could start diving into it whenever whenever you feel like it. Oh yeah, I'm, I had a pre pour earlier uh, just to give it give it a little air, and uh, okay. uh, I don't. I don't know the stats on the tin as far yeah, as like. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely run it down for you. Uh, so the tail of the tape on the tin. This is what the tube looks like. A really nice tube. It's kind of a. I was mentioning this on the live on my happy hour stream earlier. Like they kind of have this like kind of nineteen twenties vibe throwback. It says industry and endeavor, the company of gentlemen merchants and purveyors of the quote can do spirit. Can do spell T A P. Ah, you see what they did there? Devised and constructed with the era, <laughs> constructed the era's most quote remarkable distillery with the singular aim of producing the world's finest single malt scotch whiskey. It's kind of tongue in cheek, but I like it. There's some like awards that it's won up here. Uh, on the back, it's got some tasting notes. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, they've been around since 1897 um of its founders of the can do spirit they're really into this can do thing it's fully matured in sherry cask natural color it says it here i missed that earlier uh so it's probably chill filtered um this is what the bottle looks like a really like nice presentation again kind of like art deco throwback stuff it, it looks i like their label i like their bottle i like everything that's going on here this is 43 percent space cider and there you go. That is the tail of the tape. Important to note, guys, also, if you get the UK version of this, it will not be 43. It will be 40%. So make sure if you do get this, if you do want the little more, you know, ABV in your uh, dram, get the United States version. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely, right. Um, all right. Yeah. So if you want to, uh, I don't know if you want to dive in first and Tell us what you're thinking. We got Tam Do 10 in the glass, y'all. Happy Yeah. Tuesday. The uh, other thing to note also, if you get a chance, uh, another one that Tam Do is noted for, and I uh, was able to have it at a tasting expo, is called the uh, Dabelia Dram. And they've had a couple batches of that. If you're a huge fan of like Highland Park Fire, uh, Longmorn 16, like a real savory, spicy dram, not mm -hmm. a lot of sweetness, but just a lot of fire and spice. The Tim Dude the Billy Dram series is phenomenally good. So just keep that in mind on the, on the side, too. Yeah, definitely will. Definitely will. Oh, man. Nice, like, crack. It's, it's almost like fresh cracked cinnamon off the get-go. Serious cinnamon going on here. Like, I mean, they just cracked it right in your face and, like, let you, like, <laughs> simmer in it right there. Yeah. Oh. Lots of nice spice, little little black pepper, but not not heavy. Little fruit, nice candy ginger almost. Oh wow, huh. that's interesting. It's kind of like a nice combination of the sweetness and the spice together. That's why I, I for some reason, thought candy ginger right off the bat. Yeah, sure, sure. 
It's got some nice florals in there too, like medium level to light. Oh man, I didn't pick up much on the floral side, but I, I kind of see what you're saying. Then it gets like to this thickness, almost like a. It's like it's almost like chocolate level, but not fudge. It's like um, like a almost like a little hint of cocoa. Huh. It's all over. It's like it, it it's light, but it covers a lot of bases for me. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Like I I am totally with you on the spice. It's like a. I, have you ever had glue vine or like mulled wine, like in the holiday season? Mm. Where it's like you basically have a hot red wine that has like clove and cinnamon stick and like some allspice in it. Like that is what this smells like to me. It is like very Christmassy. It's very spicy with the cinnamon, but it's not like a hot cinnamon candy. It is very much like the powdery ground cinnamon. There's also just like a lot of like rich fruit in here that seems yeah. to be mixing with what feels like a nice bourbon cask, despite it's all sherry. Like, I was gonna say the the weird thing I was I was just about to say, even though it looks like these were all like sherry casks, I'd get a boatload of like the bourbon esque, like the caramel yeah, and the totally the caramels there, almost like a hay. Oh man, it's it's, it's a nice sweetness, and there's still that like almost chocolate like earthiness that's in the back and I, I it's hard to explain but yep <laughs> for a 10 year i'm surprised at how well defined and complex the nose is really yeah for sure for and i sure. did and i did warm up with like a jura 10 just to get my you know senses rolling <laughs> there you go there you go yeah i'm uh i mean i'm impressed man like i i'll tell you like the nose on this i was I was immediately very like kind of taken aback at the complexity and like it's obviously it's it's very forceful. <laughs> it's a very kind of like heavy, heavily intense whiskey. I I don't it doesn't strike me as being maybe as light as you as it is for you. Like I feel like this is this is punching above its weight in terms of like the intensity coming off the nose, but nonetheless, I uh the spice bite I get, like the spiciness and the fruit factor, I think is heavy. The only thing I'm light on is like the floral like notes. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm barely picking up the florals, but I, I kind of see what you're saying. What I'm getting much more of is raspberry. There's dark, maybe dark cherry, but it, it's it's like raspberry. It's almost like a peanut butter. It's weird. I don't know what it is with that raspberry. There's like there's like there's like this earthy. Almost like a peanut butter and jelly, but not like Concord jelly, more of like a raspberry jelly. Yeah. That's so wild. Wow. I love the viscosity of this, just looking at the legs, man. It, it runs really nice and slow. And I, I bet you if we had the 40% version instead of the 43, we would not be as happy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think that's probably the case. Mm. Really nice nose. Mm. Gotta have a taste, man. Yeah, well, let's check it out. It's lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is really nice. Wow. I can't believe it's a 10. It, it tastes a little older, like a, oh, yeah. like a 12 to 14 almost. I agree with you, mm. and I think that's one of the things. Now, like the finish... It gets a little bit short. I mean, it's not maybe not short. It's like medium. It's a little bit ethanol-y to me, but I'll tell you straight up, this tastes like it's much older than it is. And that means it's like good casks or, you know, I, I'm just deceiving myself because like the fact that, or they have older juice in this, but like this is a 10-year-old whiskey. Like it doesn't this seem is like a 12-year-old whiskey. This is maybe like a, like you were saying, Wow, I'm surprised at how it retains the spiciness, and it's got this nice combination of a sweet level and a savory level at the same time. Yeah, the savory is is seriously there. I guess I it's really for those like, like, how, I really like how it arrives. I mean, it comes in with a lot of, and it's dark fruit, 
And there's even a little dried fruit, which makes me think maybe there's some older whiskey in this. I think you're right. And it was funny. This actually makes sense than I think of it. They had this cutoff where they were shut down between 2010 and 2013. And if I remember reading correctly, I think this one might be one of those where it was uh, – like, you know, maybe there might have been some older juice. I do know that they use this uh, supposedly in Famous Grouse and Cuddy Sark. I've never had a Cuddy Sark, but I've had Famous Grouse, and I'm not a big fan of it. So I'm, I'm really surprised that this is, like, one of the bases of it. So there might be some other crappy juice in it. But, yeah, yeah. But this one's have really good. Had, have you ever had the Naked Grouse? No. The only ones I had was the Famous and the Smoky one. Uh, Got the it. You, you – of all people, you should definitely, because you I know how much you love Sherry, you should try the Naked Grouse. It's first Phil Oloroso. I mean, it's an NAS. It's 43%. It is It is what it is. Right. But I'm telling you, for like a $30 pour. Um, do you, do you it, have, hold on, sorry but to cut you off. Do you have your, your camera on like a, next to a fan or anything? No. It was, it was doing a lot of fluttering. I, I was just wanted to let you know. Oh, I wonder if, hmm, let me take a look. Sure. Sorry. I, I might have been kicking my desk, actually, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. I've done that, too. Like, I, I was just testing that earlier to make sure I wasn't shaking the camera all around. No, that's yeah. cool. I just, I just want to let you know because I, th I thought something was wrong because I kept doing it. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me adjust this. No, you're um, good. Oh, man, that's such a great nose. I think, my, I think the nose might be my favorite. The palate's, like, second and the finish is third. Um, yes, the finish is, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent. Like, I, I think, I think that nails it on the head, man. Um, that's wild though. I, I really, really love both the nose and the, and the, the initial palette though. It's just weird how, yeah, it's like, I'm not sure why it, it fades so fast unless it's like, it does, yeah, it does fade quicker than you'd want. You know what I mean? Like you really want this to. I, and again, like this is where the youth comes in, you know. Like honestly, like this is where the the youthfulness of this whiskey comes in, probably. But not just that, but I think it, the casks are probably overused too, a little bit. I imagine, like the oh, extraness, you yeah, know. Right, 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 right. Very possible. Um, hmm. it, it's yeah, it's missing like the. Um, it's got the the center. And it's got kind of a, a coating to it, but it's missing a lot of the roundness to it that makes it. Yeah, I think it like it hits really intense. You get a lot of prune, raisin, plum almost. Like it hits really intense. It does kind of fade away quick. But again, like I, I, I'm reminding myself that this is a ten year old whiskey, and I think for like, for the price, this is around a fifty dollar. $55 whiskey, like, I That's mean, well this blows the doors off of, you know, Glenlivet, Glenfiddich 12. I think this, this, you know, this probably pushes the envelope of competing in terms of like a heavily shared whiskey with, you know, I'm trying to think of like uh Glenfarclas 10 or Glenfarclas 12. Like, I think this beats those easily. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that. It, de it definitely has a little more roundness than the nose even at a younger age. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I might prefer a Glenlivet on would be maybe the the fruitiness versus the spice factor. If I'm wanting more of a fruity dram, I might go for the Glenfiddich. But yeah, I'm not sorry, Glenlivet. But the uh, but this has definitely got more of a a complex and balanced spice fruit savoriness. So I mean, yeah, I I, I definitely think it's a, a a better quality whiskey. We'll put it. Yeah, there. It's so much complexity for for what is. Honestly, like it's a t you know a ten year old single malt <laughs> that's probably chill filtered, uh, well, mo you know most assuredly and like likely, but like uh, I think it really punches above its weight. I might add a. It has this. Bit, it's got this little bit of a bite, but uh, of uh, ginger, but it's not bad. I'm gonna add just a couple of drops and see if uh, if it changes much. Yeah. Thankfully, at 43, you can definitely add a couple to it and not be too, you know, worried about losing its uh, power. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, my. 
Yeah, man. Um, it, where did you find this one locally? It was at a shop. I mean, I, I must have got this. I mean, this was months ago because I, I was this must have been like in May or April. I don't even know. But I got it at a local shop and it was just sitting there and and I had never really see it. You know, there, there's like three or four places in South Jersey that I'll go hunt around at every once in a while to pick up something new. And this is one of them because I'm part of this like whiskey society in here in Philly. And like, so we get a discount at certain stores. So I like to like swing by those stores and see if there's anything there worth grabbing. And yeah, this was just sitting there and it was like, I think it was like $52 or something like that. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Like I, I never really had Tam do, I wanted something different. I thought it'd be what, fun. And yeah, I'm, I think it's been rewarding. Was this the only one that they had? Um, God, I don't know. I, there might've been a couple more, but again, like this was a long, like this was, early this year i mean it yeah. was all, like maybe even pre-covid yeah the um one thing i was going to ask you i know to, i know that pennsylvania and virginia are state run is new jersey open or is it yeah new jersey's open so like yeah it's one of those things where i mean philadelphia is located in such a place where like literally across the river is jersey so you can you know from my house and i live in west philadelphia to get to New Jersey is a 10 minute drive, you know, like wow. I literally go over the Ben Franklin bridge and I'm in Jersey. That's <laughs> so pretty cool. Like I drive through center city and then like do that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's really close. And of course, like that makes it easier if the government stores here, for example, like they, they have pretty fair prices, but they don't always get all the selection you want. And so, you know, it's good to be able to go hunt around at the private shops when you're looking for something in particular. And that, that is definitely, happened for me. Um, and so I do that quite frequently. And another state you're really close to is Delaware too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I we're I'm probably what a 20 minute, 25 minute drive from the Delaware border. What do they, are, what do they have? Cause I'm not even familiar with Delaware law. I don't know. I mean, there's a couple places that I've been to in, Oh, what is that city? Wilmington. Yeah. Wilmington. Yeah. You know, that I've stopped off at and you know, they were okay. Uh, like, Preston's or something. And then they you know, they got total wine and all that. The total wine had a decent, um, had a decent selection. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's, it, you, there's not like, it's not like massively cheaper or anything. Delaware was, Delaware was like modestly priced. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be doing a lot of parks, uh, with my radio and driving around to all the state parks there. So if I, post COVID, if once that happens, I'll be able to stop in a lot of these places and I'll give you a kind of a scoop on, on if I find a good one. In yeah, definitely, definitely let me know. Um, and I do have a recommendation of like one place that's like worth checking out because they do have a pretty good selection. Oh, okay. Um, I'll send you the link for it. That'd be cool. Cause I'm always up for uh, half the fun is like just when I'm out at the parks, I'll just see some, you know, off the wall, but, but pretty good sized rural looker place. And those are the best ones to just pop in and see what's still sitting there after three years. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> That's where you get your hundred dollar Lafroy 18s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man. You know, the, Isn't the, that the insane? Shop, like, yeah. The shop that like people don't expect to go into. And then all of a sudden you're like, Jackpot! I just discovered a bunch of good stuff that shouldn't be here, and yeah, that's what, and that's what about it. Like when you go to a new town, um, you can hunt around a little bit. I mean, um, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but yeah, I'm going to be for a while. I'll be starting next week. I'll be in Los Angeles. Oh wow! So we're going to be uh, yeah. So I'll be on a little bit of a different time zone. It'll it won't be as dark behind me uh, while we do our stream, um, but we'll you know we'll keep things going as normal. Of course, I'm, I'm going to pack a bunch of all the needed samples with me and uh, do that. But I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, I think um, the first and foremost, it's, it's like a, just kind of a personal like trip to, uh, you know, uh, work on some things, but I'm also going to be, uh, you know, I'll have some free time and when I have it, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll hunt around a little bit and see if there's, if there's any gems out there and maybe you'll get weird texts from me when you're asleep, but it's like only nine o'clock in my head. I'm like, tell us, okay. we got to get this. Should I get it? <laughs> yes. Get it. No, that's no problem. Is this for work or something else or uh, more personal? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Personal, but, well, yeah. hopefully it's good and, and works out the way you want it to. That's the most important thing. Yeah, indeed. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm going to have a, 
I'm staying at like right on a beach and I'll probably be there for, I don't know, a month at least. That sounds good, man. Can I come? <laughs> probably. <laughs> I wish I could. If you're, uh, if you're willing to get on an airplane, uh, <laughs> which I'm not like feeling great about, but I'm going to do it anyways because like, I, I really have to. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh looking forward to it a little change of scenery is going to do me good right now so it'll be fun uh my, my wife and work would probably have a problem with me just saying see you guys for a while <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 right see you in a month <laughs> that'd be horrible yeah, yeah but the totally. idea is, is is kind of fun but uh yeah it's been a while i've been to california a couple of times been to san francisco and uh sure. san diego uh once for work one was for work for san francisco and once for fun in san diego down south and both were pretty fun to I'm not sure if I would like the rest of the state as a whole lot, but I did like those two cities a lot. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of uh, opportunities to visit California. I've been to Los Angeles probably six or seven times. Um, I went a lot, a lot, uh, a couple times in my early twenties as I was like staying with a friend in Tijuana for a while. Oh wow! So I went there. Went to San Diego. I've been to San Francisco and Berkeley, Oakland. Um, twice i've also been to um uh is it fresno uh yeah. the park uh, yosemite i went to yosemite um so i've seen like i would you know, love to go there the hot spots. yeah which were all great um i mean it's it's a beautiful place so uh yeah it, it should be uh it should be a good little uh good little trip so we'll see it yeah. has some great prices out there so i'm sure you're gonna find some good deals if you look in the right place yeah, yeah if that's on my radar I'll, I'll definitely probably hunt around because i know i mean when i lived in dc there were a bunch of places you know like all the cheapest stuff like i built my collection from getting shipments from california because they had you know you go to the shop on the corner in in downtown dc and it's like hard bag of 109 bucks and you're like i want this and then you go online and there's some 50 shopping bucks <laughs> for $55. You're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, I'm not I, sure I, how the, isn't that weird? Like it comes all the way from Scotland and it goes all the way freaking around the world to California yeah. for a cheaper price. And it just coming across the pond to New Jersey. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with yeah, that picture? Totally. Yeah, totally. It's, it's ridiculous. Jersey's not bad. I mean, there's some places like Jersey's pretty liberal with their shipping and there are definitely some good shops there, but you know, I still have a list of places like Pennsylvania is pretty restrictive, but there are still places that'll ship to Pennsylvania. So I do it. Um, I've I've have gotten some things shipped to me. And speaking of, uh, this is going to really blow your top off. Speaking of like stumbling across bottles that you should never find, my younger brother, who is a bourbon head, um, he was at a shop in uh, the uh, uh, suburban Milwaukee. And he fucking walked in. And what do they have on the shelf? Batch three and batch four of Lefroy 10 castring. Oh, wow. We we're talking like 10 year old bottles. And they had a ton of them. Oh, so wow. He bought me a bunch. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, he bought me like, I think I got two of one of the batches and one of the other. And so, like, the idea that, like, you literally walk in and see batch, like, uh, Lefroy 10 castring. Of that batch, like batch two and three, these are from like 2001, 2002. That's crazy. So, yeah, they're getting shipped to me. Um, and I definitely will have a sample to share with you, uh, probably for a show in early 2021. We'll maybe that what we'll do is we'll do a little comparison. Yeah, the, the new and the new, old, the new one and the old, and, and see what happens. But yeah, what a fun. I mean, they weren't even that expensive. And so, it, where, where it, was it, this it, again? <laughs> so, this was a place called Ray's Liquors in, uh, in, Wow, think, Wisconsin outside Milwaukee. It's actually I, my hometown where I grew up. I think I've actually heard of it, believe it or not. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Apparently, they have like 25 bottles of Lefroy 10 cast rink batch four and like wow. 10 bottles of Lefroy 10 cast rink batch three just sitting on the shelf. Like, why do they have that many of these? Like, that was about 12 years ago or 10 years ago like why, or eight years ago, whatever. Why would that even be sitting there? The only thing I could think of is, you, you know how it is when you like try to code things, maybe they got a shipment in a long time ago and they yeah. didn't sell all of them, but instead of like recording them with, for new pricing, maybe they missed the, you know, maybe missed the whole. What is that called in the Monopoly game? The uh, bank error in your favor collects. It's huge. 
Yeah, they Shoot were like, the bucks. I'm like um, if I was there, I mean, I'm glad I wasn't in there because I would have, it would have been a problem, you know? <laughs> Can you load all of these in my car? I'm just going to give them to my friends because how do you have this old of Lefroy tin casting sitting on your shelf? I've never seen that before. <laughs> so it was, it was, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite stoked about it, to be honest with you. Like, that's my favorite and the idea of getting one that's, you know, that old is crazy. Ever find, right. Is it's like is, almost getting like a 20 year old. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's pretty exciting. So. I can imagine that it'll be really fun. I, I don't get to, to, to compare old and new batches very often. So that would be really cool to be able to yeah. get a brand new one from 2021 and uh, taste the 2001 version and see yeah, how totally, different. Totally. It happens. <laughs> Good to see you, Dustin. It's okay to be late. He uh, was, no, saying he was, uh, he was uh, running uh from Lurk. Uh, we just talked about the uh, the Tandu. I'm going to think about a score here on the yeah, 10. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, how has this opened up for you, and how's it la how's it landing? The, the, the 10, I haven't gave a score yet, so I'm going to go ahead and, and say that that 10 was really good. I love the nose. I did like the palette a lot. The finish did leave me hanging, unfortunately, and it was a, it's a, it's a bit weird that the, the nose was so damn good. Like, if yeah. I was just rating the nose by itself, it'd be like a four out of five. The palette was like a three and a half out of five, and the finish was like a two out of five. So I'm kind of trying to factor all that in. Sure. I'm thinking, you know, it's it, it's definitely, I, I think of three stars being an average dram, and it's definitely above average. How much above is where I'm having a tough time. But I'm going to say three and a half. I think I was going to say 3.25, but the nose and palette are so good. Even though the finish was such a letdown, I thought that the, yeah, the, the 3.5 might be fair on that first one. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I hear, I, I, I pretty much agree with all of what you're saying in regards, like the finish is probably the weakest part Like I guess for a 10 year old whiskey, it's somewhat expected. Um, to not have like the longest finish in the world. That said, I think I'm a little bit more bullish on this one than you. Um, I, I really think like this, this hits a lot of notes with a lot of depth and intensity that I just, I don't think I could say I have found in a 10 or, I mean, I'll be honest, even in a 12 year old whiskey, the dark root flavors that are coming out of this, like this has I, what I have to assume is some really quality casks um, or some older whiskey in it because there are, the dried fruit notes are a little bit there. So like, you know, dried fruit notes in a young whiskey can usually be an indicator of whether or not it's got some older juice in it uh, because, you know, oxidization of a sherry whiskey in a, in a barrel is going to induce those flavors going from fresh to drier, you know? There's a little bit of it in here, but the, I'm just so impressed by how dark and like rich this whiskey is and that it's got some complexity that keeps me wanting to drink it because I want to find out what else is going on. I think I'm a, I think I'm a 375 on this, uh, which is, you know, I'm, I'm oscillating between the 3.5 and the 3.75, but I, I, I think, you know, right around that range is is about where I'd land on this. I'm, I'm quite impressed, actually, and... You know, uh, it makes me really excited for hour number two, where we're going to turn this up another five years and try a 15 year old version of it, which is going to be, uh, it has to be exciting. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. I'm to try it. But yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, and, and it sounds like it was, you know, maybe a little bit more than you expected. Oh, yeah. Big time. I, I was going to be, so I, I was, expecting it to be like a 2.75 or a three out of five because I figured, well, I, I knew I already liked him do from the batches, the Debilias and the 15 that I've tried before. Um, but the 10 is just, I mean, another really good reason to, to, you know, go in on a Tamdu because it's, it's so underrated. It's, it's one of those that's very, uh, it's it's kind of weird. It might be one of the very few left that you know you don't have to spend an extraordinarily a huge amount of money to get your hands on a you know 
a dram of it and uh, hopefully it stays that way for a lot longer than uh i'm thinking it might because <laughs> they keep getting yeah. better and better every like the, for the past four or five years they keep getting better and better this is a bit of an absolutely weird box though <laughs> this is the uh that's the 15 huh this is the box of the 15 and they wow they, they give you this really almost oversized really elaborate boxes i mean it's it's kind of cool it's got like you know some nice uh engraving and gold uh trim and whatnot and you know they give you the typical we're going to tell you our nose uh palette and finish notes and give you a little bit of a history lesson and all that but uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's got this weird top you take off and it has like a little fit Wow, Dang on that's it. quite a presentation. I mean, compared to this 10, which is like, again, I like the 1920s kind of font and, and the way that they talk about it on here. It kind of has that advertising style. But I mean, it's a nice tube. I like the way they present it. But that is, yeah, that's quite different. And does, does the bottle look similar? I mean, this is that bottle of the 10. Yeah, it's yeah, a, they still have that same bottle. I like this bottle quite a bit. It's got this really long, elongated bottom. I do like the bottom. Like it kind of reminds me of that Hibiki bottle that you had that one time. Oh, the uh, yeah, the Japanese Harmony. I, I might use this for a Solera bottle. Actually, it's actually not a bad idea. I just take the label off and maybe use it. But this is the oldest Tamdu that I can find. That's a distillery bottle. So I'm gonna hold on to it for now. But maybe someday, if I ever get like a, if they ever release like a 21 or a at least an 18, I can step up to that bottle and then I can use this for a Solera. That'd be kind of cool. But it's a uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's that's, a, a, that's a good that's a good bottle for like an infinity bottling or something because like it is it is a really nice looking bottle. It's a similar uh, look. It's got this you know similar kind of a style. The uh, doesn't have the writing, but the, the the can that you're using is a lot like all the other ones, like the batches and the debilia drams. I think even come in a can like that one. This is the only one I've seen them do this, and I, it might be because this might be one of their. I think it might be their oldest release. It's a limited. Uh, supposedly i think it's only i think it's a, a lot in the yield though let me look and see what the i think it was like twenty four thousand bottles so they say it's limited but it's limited to twenty four thousand. Oh, wow. so it's kind of a lot if you think of it you know yeah you, you shouldn't have any hard time finding it um i do hear really good reviews on it uh from time to time even though i ha don't look too much into those until i do my own but yeah for sure for sure yeah. yeah, this is going to be a fun one at 46%, 15 years. It's uh, specifically both American and European oak x sherry casks. So you've got both sides of the oaky factor coming for you. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to trying it. Um, I haven't seen, like, yeah, that's, I mean, it is one, for example, that I haven't seen really anywhere. Maybe once. I mean, I haven't seen it in any shops that I would ever, you know, that I've frequented ever in um, in the South Jersey area. And I don't think that they sell it. Or I've seen it at Total Wine, or uh, not Total Wine, at the Fine Wine Good Spirits PA government shop. I mean, maybe, uh, I don't know if Anthony Marquez is, or Mark is here or uh, uh, Whiskey Ace, but they might, they're both PA Denzins, so they might, they might know too. Well, I got this one. I got this from the UK, so it might even be a better deal if you get it overseas. Don't forget that too. Mm, this yeah. is the UK version of it. Um, got you. And thankfully, it does say natural color, which is good. 46, yeah. Forty-six percent. It doesn't say about the chill filtering. So with you, I'm assuming that it probably is, but I still think the taste is going to be pretty good. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, the the turn. The ten says it doesn't say it on the bottle, but it says it on the tube that it's natural color. But it doesn't say anything about chill filtration, so we can probably assume it. Um, Forty-three percent. So. I love that natural color, though. I mean, that's pretty uh, nice. Uh, that is. Yeah. Color. Let me uh, let me actually pour some of this fifteen in a glass. Uh, I'm still yeah. kind of on the ten a little bit, but let me pour some of this. And uh, oh, sorry. I no, that's okay. Uh, I'm ready. Like, uh, let me just let it rest for like ten minutes, and then um, if you want to dive in, we can dive in. I was thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It is yeah, that, Tuesday, man. You you know you weren't around last week, so we, we gotta we gotta remedy that. I do have a little bit of my warm up dram still left, so I'll hit a little bit of that before I go to the uh, fifteen. But yeah, it's a. Uh, I think you're going to be in for uh, a good 
experience. Mm. We'll, put it, we'll put it that way. It'll be interesting to see what you, uh, how you take it. <laughs> nose is somewhat similar to the 10. At first, at first nosing that, that cinnamon note is so assertive on that. That's interesting. Yeah. I'll let that sit for a minute. Let me, um, let me bounce off for a second. I got to grab uh, a little bit of water and then I'll come sure. back and we can uh, knock this out. Sounds good, man. And I'll bring you back in when you come back there. Let me catch up on some comments here. Sorry about the, uh, the, uh, camera shake. A1, good to see you from, uh, Hawaii. It sounds like, I think you're still out there. Ball to break. Uh Oh, uh, it's hard to come in mid conversation on some of these. Uh Oh, Oh, that sounds nasty. <laughs> yeah, I like the old ball bear boxes with the magnetic opening. Me too, man. That's a that's a good call on that one. Aloha. I did a head to head compare with the Tamdu 15 and the Glendronic Revival, and it held up quite well, though. I preferred the Glendronic 15 a bit better. Hmm. This is what I hear a lot of comparisons with. I don't want to tell him that just yet, so we'll keep that on the down low when he comes back. I want him to, to go through it first and then ask him what he thinks, if he can compare that to that whiskey and see. I wish I had some here to open with it because I, I have heard that it's really damn close uh, as far as quality. And I know a lot of you guys, especially uh, Dustin and uh, Stephen, are always uh, – Touting how great the the Glendronic 15, you know, revival, even the new one is. So, way better price in the UK on the Tamdu 15. Yeah, that's why I got it that way. It says unchill filtered. Okay. Huh. I wonder if that makes it. Oh, it is unchill filtered. You're right. It's right there. I, I missed that on the side. <laughs> Once it gets to the the history lesson, I usually uh, skip it. But yet. You're right, family. Uh, 15 is, is unchill filtered, uh, magnificent space size single mount for the Sherrywood connoisseur. So, yep, you're right. I'll let him know when he comes back on that one, too. I'm glad I touched base with you guys. Richie Z, good to see you, man. But nothing about color. Uh, yes, on, on mine, it also says that it's a natural color. If you look on the bottle on the back where it says UK, it says uh, exclusively matured natural. I'm sorry, and uh, Sherry got cast natural color. So there you go on that one. Let me bring uh, oop, let me bring him back in here. Sorry about that. <laughs> if this is uh, in uh, silver, I think, was the one that uh, told me about the side of the box. It actually does tell you that it's uh, unchill filtered as well. So this is both unchill filtered and uh, natural color. Oh, that's great. 15 um, years and 46%. So it's crossing off all the uh, ABCDs that I like yeah. to say. Let me, from take another, let me take a little bit closer look here at the 10. I mean, it does say natural color on here, but it doesn't say anything on the bottle. And this was like on the side of the box uh, at the very bottom of the history is where they kind of said, finally, it's, it's on chill filter kind of thing. Yeah, no, there's nothing on here that that's indicating that it's non chill filter. I think the ten might be chill filtered. Yeah, because this is forty six, a little higher. Maybe that's the re reason why they didn't bother with. Yeah, it. right, right. Yeah, this one's forty three, so it's probably probably the case. Um, they, they probably figure if you're gonna like get the ten at forty, you're going not gonna want to see it. But if you bother to be in it for that much at fifteen, you're not even gonna, you know. Right, right, totally. It's totally. weird. Huh. All right, well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get into the nose a bit here. Ooh, we'll have a little palate cleanser on the side too. Again, it smells really rich and warm. Uh, it's very similar to the ten in the sense of like that cinnamon note. Getting a lot of that, but there's, it's again dark fruit. There's dark fruit in here. There's a little bit of a I mean, it's not, I don't want to go as far as saying it's citrus, but there's a little bit of a sharpness to it that, I, and it's not ethanol either. Sometimes I kind of like, it's hard to differentiate between like a sharp lemon note and an alcohol note. But I think this one is more on the citrus side, maybe like orange. There's a lot of spice in here. Yeah, I get a lot of like, like a combination of oranges and nectarines, tangerines. Yeah. It's very tangerine-y, tangy sort of. Also, I mean, this is going to sound weird. It's reminding me, you know what nougat is? 
Yeah. There's like that note going on in here where it's kind of this like it's it's like a soft vanilla, you know. It's in there, but man, yeah, there's a lot of it's like a thickness to it. There's a lot of thickness to that nougat. For sure, for sure. It's like yeah, those candy bars, candy bars, like a Mars bar. You ever had a Mars bar before? <laughs> yeah, totally. Wow, this is nice. Let us know in the chat if any of you have had the Tamdu 15. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one uh, as we go along on our tasting here. Yeah, one of them made a comment I wanted to shield you from until the very end because uh, I did want to talk to you about – I want to ask you a specific question, uh, a comparison – after this to see what you think of it uh, against another one that you've had recently, maybe for sure. For sure. It's a, it's a nice viscosity too. It holds his legs as, as just as well as the tin does, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is, I, I feel like I'm setting myself up for success here because it, it, it does strike me as it's just, and again, it's 15 years old and it's 3% more alcohol. This isn't surprising. <laughs> But this has this has a bit more subtlety to it. It's not as like loud and vibrant as that ten year old was, but the the core of it is almost the same. You know, like it, it's more rounded off. Like I'm not getting the the like intense prickle, despite it even being higher up. Like I feel like there's more. You know, the only thing has done its work on this for sure. Boy, yeah. it smells good. Yeah, some of the the fruit to me is a little darker in this one. Yeah. For sure. Like a, I wouldn't yeah, go as far as current, but there's definitely some thicker, like figgy jam. Like some. Yeah. Uh, I think when we were in the 10, I was saying more like raspberry, whereas this, it's more like, I would say it's more like, uh, it's more like raisin, maybe like even a, plum. I'm getting dates, a lot of dates in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Also, maybe cranberry a little bit. Again, it has that Christmas. Yeah, it's got that. Note. Like, I think you nailed it with the cranberry because I was missing something else with that fig. It's like it's fig. The tartness. It's, that's it's, the tartness. Yeah. There's like something acidic going on in there, too. Yeah, right. That cranberry is definitely on the nose. That ocean spray, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean spray. Yeah. Did you see that video that went like viral on Twitter of the guy listening to Fleetwood Mac? Like, did, like, just downing ocean spray on his skateboard, and he was like video recording it, and it went like, viral. This was like a week and a half ago. It's fucking amazing. Apparently, ocean spray that. sent them uh, the company that owns ocean spray, whoever that is. I'm sure it's some conglomerate. Like, sent him a whole bunch of uh, they better have. ocean spray or something. Yeah, right. I mean, he's like your number one fan. He was just like driving around chugging it. I mean, that's that video was like in a nutshell what 2020 needed. You know. Yeah, that's funny. I, I have seen a bunch of these memes with uh, dreams uh, from Fleetwood Mac. And yeah. Even even Stevie Nicks and, and Mick Fleetwood have done their own versions. I've seen recently of them oh, on TikTok. Really? It's funny. I gotta, yeah, I gotta find that. I gotta find that. It's hilarious. I know there's at least one other person, Andrew Page. Maybe you're the one that's. Uh, you were sipping on the Tamdu 15 tonight, having a first taste. Now I'm not a huge cherry fan, but this is quite good. Not overly sweet. Nice balance of sour and spice. Yeah, I hear you on that, and I think I think that's maybe what's starting to pop out to me more on the cranberry side is it's like kind of tart kind of sour yeah there is almost you know it's funny you mentioned this and i'm sure it's because you mentioned it that i'm noticing it even more acutely now but like there is that kind of uh have you ever had sour beer before yeah there's a little bit of that going on that kind of like it's it's almost citrus and tart yeah the I know exactly what you mean. It's a, it's a little hint of it, just enough to make it interesting, mm -hmm. not not overpowering or anything like that. Yeah, that's so okay. funny. Oh, and Richie was saying that uh, he, even though he doesn't have the fifteen, he's uh, oh nice poured some fifteen. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, bad strength too. That's a really good one there, Richie. Is he, uh, yeah, here's Richie. It's definitely it, and and this is it's funny. Like to me, the these are both great. The, the batch one and batch two, and this one, and they're really 
almost similar with profile taste and all that but is the the, the batches are just a little more hot because you know the cast strength but yeah. this has got a really good punchy kind of a flavor to it it might yeah. not have as much room with water as the cast strength one does but i think you'll find that it stands up to it just as much yeah yeah I mean, this is nice there's also there's more of an earthy thing coming through the longer i've noticed this like those black, plums are really coming through you know like yeah this is nice i'm i'm gonna go in for the taste so uh cilantro i think you know that with the plums too huh. mm. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that drinks. Oh, okay. This is one of my um, newer favorites, I have to say. Um, Ooh. It's a um, grape jam or grape jelly, but like somehow less sweet, like not artificially sweetened. Like a really good, like a farm made to yeah, fresh. Yeah, right, right. Fresh grape Hi, jelly. The Amish food, the food uh, stand. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Oh wow, that finish! I mean, what, what the ten was lacking in a finish, this has compensated for big time. Dark yeah. milk jam, dark fruits. There's a bit of that again, cinnamon spice. There's that. I don't know the sour that that slightly sour note seems to have gone away. Well, it's maybe there a little bit, like the cranberry thing I was mentioning. It's kind of there. Yeah, it's more in the nose than it is the palate. Thankfully, I'm actually glad it's not on the palate as much. Yeah, yeah. I really like the sweetness of the palate on this one. But it does have like some really good savory notes to balance it where it's not too overly sweet. Right. Chocolate covered raisins. Mm. The only thing weird though, it doesn't taste as old as it smells. It smells older than it tastes. It tastes great, but it's it's not that that it's not that antique, you know, I'm not sure how to explain it. It doesn't taste I young. Um, I don't know. I got to go in for another nose on this, but I kind of hear what you're saying, but I, I got to say, like, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a 15 year old and the palate delivers. I mean, the palate, like, I, okay, I'll put it this way. Like, I don't get a lot of dried fruit on it. There's not a lot of like, you know, dried, I mean, raisins, I guess, but that, that's such a flavor that you pick up in so many whiskeys like there's not those distinct interesting dried fruits like it, it is still kind of just dark fruit but still fresh juicy you know it's almost uh, tastes like a ruby port cast in a little in yeah a oh my god i was thinking the same thing earlier i was like there, there's a there's a port note to this for sure that kind of dark dark cherry cloyingness yeah it's, it's missing the oloroso Esque parts of a sherry, but it does have the ruby port kind of punch to it. So it's yeah. it's one of those weird like curveballs. Well, you said there was this was both ex bourbon and ex sherry, right? No, it's uh, American and European oak sh ex sherry casks. It's a fully matured and combination of European and uh, American oak sherry casks. Uh, yeah, it doesn't talk about anyth anything with the uh, bourbon at all, surprisingly, but. It does have a bit of an oakiness to it that it, I'm. It, at first, I thought it might be much, but it, 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 even though you hear that it has both American and European in it, to me, it doesn't bite like a, a heavily wooded whiskey would. It doesn't do that to me, at least. Some people might disagree with me on that one, but do you get a lot of woodiness from it at all? I do a little bit in the like how drying it gets, but I'm not, it's not over. Like I, there is a dark chocolate note, which I usually associate with like really kind of like barrel influence ex bourbon or bourbon cap. Or bourbon and I, was get, I, was, I was getting that from the tin a lot for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I was getting that a lot from the tin. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was too. And like, I'm, I'm also feeling in a sense, like there's a lot of similarity here, but the finish is much longer. It's creamier. It's got this nice, like, it's almost like a like caramel like a like a mocha caramel frosting or something like that. It, it really goes long. I'm impressed. It is a long like, finish. Almost, like there's like a quasi malted milk ball thing going on here. It's very long for a finish. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. 
it's it's weird. It is kind of a it has a bit of a drying sense to it, but this is one of those I'm rare drying. things. It seems like it's going to be yeah. This is one of those rare rare things where it's drying, but it's not one of those that that puts me over the edge where I'm like, oh gosh, it's too dry. I don't like it. Thankfully, it's right. I think it's because it reminds me of that ruby port. Huh. I'll have a I have a question for you. Now you've had a lot of fifteen sherry influenced drams, and a lot of people regard the Glendronic fifteen revival as like the sherry dram. Now I have heard a lot of people make comparisons of this one with that one. How close do you think it is, and do you think it overtakes it, or do you think it almost gets there, not quite there, or do you have a, a kind of a? Well, that's a good question. Um, give me a second. So I think the the core difference, like this reminds me more of Allardyce than it does Revival. Because the Revival has that, the Glendronic Revival has that PX in it, which is sweet. And like, I feel like on the finish, you get that kind of pop of sweetness. Whereas the, this, yeah, this is like, it, it seems closer to Allardyce for me. So I don't know. I. Do I think I don't think this eclipses the the revival? I, I really think the revival is one of my probably favorite that I've had in that like 15 range. I mean I like the Allardyce more, but I mean this is right up there. The the this reminds me a little bit more of the Glen Alec 15, which despite having the PX finish, has more of a spiciness to it. It's less the revival is very I don't know. It, it it doesn't seem very like. What is the way? What is the way I want to describe this? It's not as uh, refined or as like structured as as the Glen Alkey Fifteen. If the Glen Alkey Fifteen is a little bit wilder, it's a little bit more edgy, it's a little bit more assertive, and this this reminds me of a little bit more of that. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's revival territory, but again, I mean they're a little different because of the PX. Right. You I know, forgot about the PX part of it. Like where would this match up with like an Allardyce? I mean, you can tell that there's bourbon influence in this. And that's where I think the differentiation comes in, right? Like there's bourbon in influence in this for sure. Yeah, it's weird. The only thing about the, the Allardyce it doesn't touch for me is the um, the Oloroso, the dried fruit part isn't, isn't as there. Maybe it's like... Um, I, don't, I wouldn't go as far as a parliament because that's got both uh, PX and Oloroso too. Um, right. I mean, all of them do except for that. I think it does because it's like the the Allardyce has a little bit more of that drying dark fruit thing going on, whereas this one has more. What about like, the and this one is similar, whereas like I feel like the Revival Fifteen, it, it just it leaves you with that. It's a, it's a, it's that very distinct sweetness, you know. What about the uh, Portwood one? Had had, I've not had that, but I will tell you, like this reminds me of that one a bit. But this, this one's better. Me of the Quinta Rubin, like Quinta Rubin twelve, but better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I have to you on the port. I, I, I'm getting that that dark grape note, that slightly kind of acidic, slightly cloying. Yeah, I think I might even like this better than the uh, Quinta Rubin for the new fourteen. The um. Yeah, this also reminds me of the Glendronic uh, Portwood. I can't remember if it's Tawny or Ruby. I know they have a Tawny Port that they specifically say Tawny Port, so I'm assuming that their Portwood one is a Ruby Port. But does anybody know? I'm just curious if uh, if anybody knows that the Glendronic Portwood is uh, is uh, well. Yeah, you would think it'd be. It has to be Ruby if they don't put Tawny in the name, unless it's Fino. But I don't think it's Fino either. So, yeah, that's probably right. Speaking of, did you see Kilhoman just came out with the Fino? I did see that, and I did already put a little bug in, uh, in my birdie's ear locally to find me uh, find us a, a bottle of that. <laughs> mm. So that's on the radar already. He hasn't said anything yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if next week he doesn't say, guess what I've got? <laughs> Which Man, this, is this is a really good I'm – not, I'm not – I like the mix of the ex bourbon and the cherry. Like I, I can tell, I do still feel like the the sherry notes. I mean, you're saying that you're not getting as much of it. I feel like I'm getting quite a bit. 
Well, there's no bourbon in this. This is all. Uh, oh, well, I think well, there was because I feel like well, I'm getting. I thought I was like I'm feeling like I'm getting a lot of sherry, and you were. I thought you were alluding to that you weren't getting sherry. No, no. It, it, well, I guess the pin, when they say American and European oak, is that the bourbon part? I think it has. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the American the American oak part has to be okay. The, that, then, then the, 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 wrong. Let us know in the chat if you if you know for sure. But it's I both like, it's both American I, European oak and ex sherry casks. It's all of them. Got it. So, I, but I didn't know that the American oak was instantaneously bourbon. I thought it had I mean, to say. I, I don't think. It, I mean, I don't think it's a first fill American oak. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's virgin American oak. But I think they would say if it was virgin. You think would think, they, yeah. Yeah, I think if they say American oak, they're basically saying like refill bourbon. Because I, I again, like I, I get much more sherry notes from this, but uh, you like we were talking about earlier, there is a core of this one does taste more with the caramel, the vanilla, like more assertive about that than the 10 was. But I don't know. I mean, I, I it's hard to tell. I think, I think we're probably. Yeah, these are all like sherry. Uh, oh, got like, it. Okay. American yeah, and European that. oak like sherry cask, but I, I, I do see what you're seeing. There, there's there is something giving it that caramely bite. Maple syrup almost. Yeah, but I mean, like I was saying, I, I did feel like I was getting more sherry notes, and that and I wasn't sure if you were alluding to that you weren't or that you were, but it wasn't as intense as you thought it would be. Well, yeah, the the sherry. Yes, but um, it's, it was like we talked about. It was more on the the port side of things, which I know sounds crazy, but it it, it definitely to me tastes more like a port mix with sherry than just a straightforward sherry cask. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. it definitely has like a some sort of port thing. But you see, in the Glendronic is a tawny port, but I mean, I know they have a tawny port, but I thought they also had a a, a ruby port version too. But maybe not. Maybe it's all tawny because I know they have bottles that's that say specifically tawny port on them, but I have seen a port wood and I'm wondering if that's the Ruby one or not, but it could be all tawny. Uh, it, I'm not sure, but that's a shame if it's, if it's not, if they don't have any Ruby options because that's my favorite kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Sure. I do like this one a lot though. It's a, uh, I wish they had a. Um, has anyone noticed any Tamdu um, official distillery bottles older than 15? Have they ever released an 18, 21? Um, I don't believe they have. I know they were shut down briefly from 2010 to like 2012. That might have really put a ringer in their uh, releases, but uh, I'm wondering if anyone's ever had anything older because I'd love to get my hands on uh, an even older. You know, version of this if it's out there. Yeah, I would too. You could tell I like this bottle a lot because man, there's not very much left in it. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we get into the uh, the final thoughts here. I um, I'm happy to go into it first. Sure, go ahead. Um, I'm really impressed with this. Like, this is really delicious. I I think it. it it falls right in that for me that kind of like three seven five four range what was the price on this by the way oh um go ahead and get more notes and i'll um i'll look it up yeah i mean I, i'm really impressed with like the dark fruit the finish it is it really like extends i like that there's a little bit of spice going on I think this is like just well put together. I mean, it reminds me in a lot of ways of the 10, but the real difference here is that finish. And that's maybe where that five years is coming in. Like the finish here is just, it's twice as long, if not more. Uh, and it leaves you wanting to sip it more. There's there's a good amount of complexity. Again, like if you're, if you like dark fruit notes, if you really like the like kind of raisin plum, you know that this is a whiskey for you. This isn't. This is not like strawberries and, <laughs> and bright red fruits. Like this is dark fruit, and it's well put together. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I land in the like. Man, I'm. Ugh. I'm close. I I I think because of the quality of it, I think it's yeah. I think it's four out of five. I think it's you know get yourself one. How but much? Uh, you know, which? How much would you pay for it? Like well, I would go like I would go like ninety on something like this, if not more. Eighty-three. 
83 yeah, was the price. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I think it's right there. Um, I'm I like the thing that's interesting about this is that I'm I've had four or five sips and I'm interested in trying it more. I'm interested in what else is going to happen because I feel like there are some surprises in this. Every time I go in for the nose, there's a bit of a difference. Like at first it was very much the, the same as the 10 year old was, but now it's like richer and more subtle and more of these kind of like vanillas and creaminess are coming through that again, extend into a long finish that I wasn't getting with the 10. And so, yeah, I'm impressed. Big time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost strange how much longer the finish is on this just by the five years you get. I think they do have a 12 that you see. I don't think it's re regularly available now like it used to be, but there are as a, um, there is a 12 year old version you might see from time to time might be worth a pickup just to see, you know, between the 10 and the 15, what, what, you know, what's the 12 really like. But um, if you can't find the 15, it's definitely worth a, a pickup, a 83 easy. I would even go up to 95 to 100 for this bottle. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And honestly, like, how many other 15-year-olds are sub that price anyway? That's what I was saying. This is such an underrated distillery. It's crazy. But um, the only thing, like, I mean, not to say it would be any better per se. I could see why some people might – wish that it might be a little on the sweeter side because it is more of a savory slash earthy slash sweet slash you know it's even got some nice herbal and floral notes in there too so i mean it's very broad it's not like yeah. one dimensional at all that's i yeah. mean and some people like that you know if you're looking for a americans love the sweet i mean like our you know we can we don't have to get into it but like you know sweet high sugar foods like this is a staple of the American like diet you know, for lack of a, uh, you know, for good or for ill, I should say, um, probably for more ill. And so, yeah, like I think <laughs> our palates are like more accustomed to the sweets and this one, like it, it has the sweetness, but it challenges that a bit because again, like the, you were talking about the revival earlier. Like when you, when you put the PX in it, like the PX is so sweet and that really like a PX finish on this, would change this whiskey significantly. And and this is why I think like, if I was gonna compare it profile wise to another Glendronic, it wouldn't be the Revival 15, it'd be the it'd be the, uh, the Allardyce because I think the Allardyce has more of that dark fruit, that kind of like, you know, plum, raisin, you know, dates, maybe current, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously the Allardyce is, I think in a league above this, but I think profile wise, if you like the Allardyce and you want a cheaper bottle, like this Tamdu 15 is going to do you well. Yeah, it's weird to me. It's like what what a lot of the port influenced whiskeys uh, should taste like, even though there's not really any port in it. It's just really strange to me that uh, yeah. it tastes so much like a port whiskey. But um and what are the yeah? What are the notes like the port notes that you're getting specifically? Do you have like it's it's those those fruit the the plums and the the grape jelly and and, and yeah. that type of thing? That's where I'm getting that port as kind of, but more of a ruby than a tawny port. It def definitely does not taste like a tawny mm -hmm. port. But mm -hmm. uh, I I really like it a lot too. It's one of my this came out last year, 2019 in March, and. Um, it's been out for a while. You can still find it. Like I said, there's 24,000 bottles out there, so it should be pretty, uh, fairly easy, if, especially if you order it from Britain. And it's it's a good good price. You know, 80, 82, 80, I think was the the price uh, uh, pounds wise. Uh, I'm sorry, 63 pounds before the uh, conversion. So, you know, 82, 83 bucks is, is is definitely, I think, a great deal. I'm 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 with you. I'm I'm definitely in close to a 3.75 to a four the glendronic 12 is is another like a four out of five whiskey to me and i think it's on par quality wise with that whiskey um, um, yeah you and i had a little disagreement on the glendronic 12 but it wasn't significant i think i was more than like the three five range but yeah, yeah I, I i see what you're saying i mean i think this is a significant step up um I'm thinking definitely at least a 3.75. I might, I might lean toward a four as well. And I think, yeah, this is definitely a, at least a four, maybe even a four two five. It's I'm kind of talking myself oh, wow. onto it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, right. Like it, it, it's checking all the boxes, man. That's the like, thing. 
It doesn't necessarily have the depth you would expect, but again, it's a, or not that you would expect, but it, it's not like it doesn't have the depth of an Allardyce. But for a 15 year old, like this is, I mean, I can think of 15 year old whiskeys that are much less interesting than this that are more expensive, you know, like yeah. on average. And that's what I think is really the, the charm here. I mean, and you know, for folks in the chat, if you if you've never checked out Tamdu before, you know, like bringing endorsements from Telex and I about Tamdu. These, these are even the ten year old. I mean, these are these are quality drams, and I, I think you guys would would all really enjoy it, especially if you're into sherry Oloroso sherry matured whiskeys, especially. Like I think that both of these really shine. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, since it checks all the. The year, the ABV, the coloring, and the no uh, chill filtering and all that. I think it, I definitely it's got to be at least a four. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with a four out of five on this one. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. for 15. I'd love to see what they can do at a 18 and a 21. Yeah. I, bet it, I bet it would be unreal. I wonder if they. I mean, since they opened back up in 2012, they should be able to do one. You would think here. Not too long. Sooner than later, right? Yeah, maybe it'll maybe that'll be on the shelf in a couple of years. I mean, I'm sure that they maybe use a bunch of their stock to try to get you know a lot of it's going to these earlier younger releases because they gotta establish themselves maybe. But yeah, no, I'm with you, man. Um, I think exciting things coming out of Camdu in the next five years. I'm hoping that they don't have to um, sacrifice uh, quality uh, as they go up in age. Uh, so far, so good. Like I've been happy. Like I said, with their uh, entry level stuff, with their with this one, with the um, the batches, with the Debilia Dreams. I have never had a bad Tamdu that I can think of. Have you ever had one that you were not a fan no, of? I mean, I've only had the ten, and now this this fifteen, and so yeah, they're batting up, they're batting a thousand. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It, it, I'd love to see. I, I do like the fact that the batches have a higher ABV. I think that does help a lot. And if you were going to get a new Tamdu for yourself uh, and you d can't find the 15, I would definitely do when the batch cast strength, cast strength ones first. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's that's absolutely like what's on my mind. Um, I uh, On my happy hour earlier tonight, there was and Peter White amongst a bunch of other folks were sharing ringing endorsements of their batch, the, the cast rank batch stuff. So I'm definitely interested. Yeah, it's funny. I have a, a friend uh, named KB in New York. Uh, when we went and visited uh, last a couple of years ago, uh, I told him I was going to find a batch one for him. And I did. <laughs> Luck, I got really lucky. It was the last one they had. And I held it for like an additional year. And I finally got to trade him for it like a, a month or two ago. And now he's a happy, uh, proud owner of a batch one. <laughs> now I wish I kind of <laughs> kept it for myself because it is that good. It, the the two and the three are, are pretty damn good too. So hopefully the batch as they increase its numbers, they won't uh, down, you know, be a downfall. Yeah. So, I wonder sure. how, many, how many batches can you get? Like, you, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed, like, the cast strength, uh, like, Glendronic, I think, is on number eight or nine by now, and Tamdu's on, like, at least number five. Like, how many of these can they do? Do you know how that works at all? I don't. I mean, I've seen, like, Glen Allocky, for example, I think has upwards of three or four batches out now of their 10 year old cast drink. And like, I think those have only been on the market for two years. So, I mean, they're pumping them out maybe biannually or, you know, twice a year or whatever. Um, isn't, Le isn't Lefroig up at like batch 16 or 17 now or something? Uh, no, they're only at batch 12. So oh. this is batch 12. Yeah. Uh, they do, theirs is annual. So like the, the cast drink 10 that they put out is, is twice uh, or once a year. Another one I think about is Springbank. Springbank is, I think they do two batches a year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Of their 12 year old casting. Oh, okay. That's another really good uh, one. I'm not sure what batch number they're on either. Yeah, no, they don't put batch numbers on them like Lefroy does. Like, you kind of got to hunt around for it on the internet. They're probably on batch 20 by now. I don't know. Maybe some folks in the chat know. Yeah, Springbank's been doing it. So like, what's your feed, like, your thoughts or feedback here are on. Uh, on Cam Dew. Um, I think Telex and I are both fans here. And we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts if you have uh if you're thinking about picking up one now or if you've had the 10 or the 15 and agree well, with us. I don't think Dustin's still around, is he? I'll, I'll uh, just for giggles, I was gonna sh share with you what he uh 
came up with on the uh, on the fifteen. I was looking on the side, and uh, I was a little surprised, but not completely. He uh, he did he did fairly what you know enjoyed it for for his. Uh, he, he's usually pretty picky. Uh, he got berries, earthy oak, wine funk, vanilla, hint of spice, cinnamon. Ginger, hints of dry milk chocolate on the nose, which we yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Tasty said was a sherry bomb for sure, but there's a, lot, a good bit of oak character here, almost too much. It gets sweeter as it opens up, more vanilla, a bit of toffee, chocolate, and still more oak. The finish was dry sherry oak and some chocolate. I did this one a while back side by side with a batch three, and it was shockingly. It was shocking how similar the sherry notes were. This is a bit thinner, not cast strength, and there's a bit more oak here. I don't, however, feel the finish is longer or really that the age did more for this one. And part of me feels those that the cast strengths are actually pretty old whiskey, or at least have a good bit of older whiskey, as it's surprisingly similar how they are. So he's feeling that the batches that they get are really comparatively. And I, I have to agree with him that I, I think the batches must have some older stuff in there because they do taste like they're at least 10 years old, if not longer, older. Yeah. Older. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, I, like I said, I've not had the batches, so I can't really compare, but yeah, those notes sound similar to kind of what I've been picking up. It's a really good whiskey, but it, it's a uh, better oaky for only 15 years. Not as creamy as his cast strength that, said still very good and one i'll strongly consider getting more of uh, if i can't place replace the uh, cast strength option so it sounds like he prefers the batch strength you know cast strength ones but not really yeah it's not uh, that he disliked it yeah he only gave yeah, it a three out of to, uh, i would love to try any of those cast strings at some point i mean i'm i'm very interested in those maybe we can you know hunt around for some of the different batches and Maybe we'll get lucky and find uh, find one or two, and we could do a little uh, taste by taste comparison. I mean, it's very similar to what we are going to be doing um, probably what in a month or two with Glendronic eighteen Allardyce. So I have a twenty two year old bottle of the eighteen year old Allardyce and a twenty four year old bottle, and we're going to do a little uh, blind side by side and see what happens with those. So that'll be fun, and it'd be similar to like get something of the same. The same range, the same lineup, and and do a little back and forth. Yeah, the the um, it looks like most people um, liked it a pretty much a, a pretty good deal. Like I said, I also saw a couple uh, reviews on the side where they were actually comparing it to the uh, the fifteen revival. But like you, I don't. I think that the fifteen is better because of that hint of px at the end so i do miss that in this one a little bit like just very slightly it's like it's it's just a minute uh, you know just a little bit but uh, enough to make me think i'm gonna keep it i think at a, at a four out of five but that's still yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you that, for sure it's a, still a really damn good dram that i would never pass up and especially if you get a chance to have it at a special bar or a you know, something like that, I would definitely be all over it because I don't think they would charge you that much. You know, I don't even think it'll be more than 20 bucks for a, a glass of it at that price. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. I'm trying I to think, think if it's like 85 bucks, they probably would only charge you like 12 to 15 dollars for a glass, you would think. I'm not sure what the, the ratio is. I'm sure state to state that changes too. <laughs> Yeah, and this brings up an interesting point, Alex. Like, uh, we're thinking about 15 year old whiskeys or just about age statement whiskeys in general when it comes to scotch. Um, I found myself increasingly enjoying and being basically like kind of blown away by the 15 year old age statement kind of range. Now, of course, you know, qualifying this. Uh, 15 is just one variable, like it could be sherry, it could be ex-bourbon, but I'm talking specifically about the age and what it does to the whiskey. And I'm generally finding that I'm enjoying some 15, sometimes in some cases more than the 18. I think about Glen Goyne, for example, that like there's this sweet spot that you know, like it's increasingly relevant to me between, you know, the kind of more delicate, complex, but like 18 year old 
And the 15, which is kind of still youthful and vibrant, but has a longer finish and kind of has a little bit more complexity. Like when I'm thinking about like how much I want to spend on a whiskey, how much I would tell other folks to spend on, I'm increasingly finding some of these 15 year old whiskeys to kind of be that sweet spot. And I'd be curious what your thoughts are on that. And if there are any like 15s that you've had that have been, you know, rev I mean, not revelations, but just the kind of things that you would say to yourself, you know what, like, this is, this is where this belongs. Like uh, this, this 15 expression is kind of the best of the range I've had. The best like example of that, that, popped in my head as soon as you were talking was the Glen Scotia 15 versus the Glen Scotia 18. And, and a lot of this is also due for some reason, and hopefully somebody can tell me why this is, but like a Gilmura is another good example where they have a 15 where they have a really good sherry cask influence. And I prefer the 15 than the Glenmora um, 18 is a straightforward bourbon. And that happens a lot. Like Deanston has an 18 at straightforward bourbon and they have other years that have the sherry. Why is it that 15 usually has the sherry and 18 is usually the bourbon? And I never could figure out why. It's so funny you bring this up, man. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to pour myself a, a, something a little peated. And I, I definitely want to respond to that because I'm going to do the Aaron quarter cask here. Oh, nice. What's so interesting about what you said is like, I think that that's completely true, but it's the opposite with Glen Scotia, despite how it lands on the palate. When I first had the Glen Scotia 15, which was my, again, my whiskey of the year for 2019, I. I was convinced there was sherry in it. I was convinced. And I think like most people that probably try it will think there's some sherry. From what I've read, and I might be wrong, like there may be some, you know, news out there that I didn't get. It is all ex-bourbon. Whereas the 18, which I sampled tonight on my happy hour on my channel, actually um, has a year of First school Oloroso sherry finish. Well, shit, you're right. <laughs> right? It blows I mean, my mind. The 15 yeah, tastes like it's got sherry all over. You had the Glen Scotia 15. Like, were you convinced there was sherry in that? Because I was. Like, I was convinced there was sherry in that. And the weird thing is, not just that, that you mentioned that. Now that I look up the 18, the 18 is the one that supposedly has sherry in it. Yeah, and I don't, and I don't get sherry any finish. sherry in it. Yeah, it has the sherry finish. Andrew and King, I and I Andrew swear this to me, and and he actually just posted like he agreed on the 15s, Glen Goyne 15, Highland Park 15, Glen Scotia 15. Um, what was the other one he said? Spring Bay 15 or Dominant. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I 100% agree. Like when you're comparing them to the 18s, I, I feel like. But why does the Glen Scotia 18 taste like it's full blown bourbon cask only? Really? Opposed, really? Yeah. Oh I my had, God. I sampled it tonight, and I'll tell you, I thought the opposite. I thought really? that, I thought that the sherry cast finish, the fruity sweetness of that, was overpowering. Um, and I'm not saying it that way. It was delicious. Like it had the Glen Scotia characteristic kind of like complexity and a little bit of that mustiness, the like citrus. It was great. It's been a long time since I've had the 18, so maybe it's worth a revisit. <laughs> it sounds but, like. Yeah. No. I. I. I'll tell you, man, I, when I tried the Glen Scotia 15 and I was blown away by it, I was convinced that there was some sherry gas in that. When you had the 18, was that recent or a long time ago? Recent? If you call, if you call two and a half hours ago recent. Oh, wow, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had it tonight for the first time. I was, uh, I was given a sample. It's been three years or so, so maybe I'm, I'm not sure if they have any differentiation on like releases or whatnot. But I'll have to see. Uh, I'm gonna have to get my hands on another 18 and, and try it again because I, it, it, I think it might have been one of those expos where you drink it, you know, you had to sip it fast and all that mess. So I might not have had a, enough time to really spend with it. But I could have sworn that the 15 felt like it was heavily sherry in, in, in involved, and then the 18 was all bourbon. But it, you're right; it's the absolute reverse of that. <laughs> That's yeah. Because I know what you're saying. Like that's like that's the normal mo in for a lot of these distilleries. It seems like, and yeah, Glen Scotia is the opposite. Man, it's, did you it's prefer hard. the? Did you remember preferring the 18 versus the 15 on that one? Or I mean, if I if I was gonna like I said, I just had the 18 for the first time tonight. I I would still say like again, taking price into consideration, 
I still think the 15 is the gem of their range, even though I think the Victoriana is awesome. I think True. the 15 is kind of the gem. But that 15 or that 18, what I was saying on the happy hour when I was tasting it, the sample that I was sent, I was amazed at how like forceful and vibrant it was. You know, I was thinking about things like Highland Park 18, which are kind of subtle and much more delicate. And, you know, you kind of got to like, go back and, you know, like you got to really parse out the notes a bit because it's so well aged. Yeah. Like, Glen Scotia 18 was loud and it was vibrant. And I I still like really, really enjoyed it. And I, I say it was quite the 15. I think the 15 is special in its own way. But I, I'm not, I, it's no slot. Like, if you find that for under 100 bucks, it's an absolute buy. On that Glen Scotia 18, they say it's 17 years in oak, and then the it's married and blended for a transfer into former Oloroso sherry for just yeah. a year of maturation. So that might be why it was so uh, so rambunctious, I guess, the word for it. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, sounds really good, though. I'm going to have to get me another another go at that. Because, yeah, I just had a sample. It wasn't a bottle of, uh, of 18. I don't have a, a bottle of 18. I have the 15 and the Victoriana. Um so that's definitely on, on the to-do list. I don't even know if they have a 21 or not. I don't think they have a regular 21, do they? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I don't think I've seen that one. But uh, Have you had a double cask, like the kind of entry-level one? I have not had it, but I am interested in trying it. So I'm hoping that maybe you and I can do uh, – I'll look for the 18 or maybe – they have a 25. I'm not sure what the price on that's going to be. I'll have to look. But if I can find a reasonable price on the 25 or at least definitely the 18, uh, if you pick up the double oak, we could uh, – double whatever, we could do uh, – we could do those two if you felt like it. Yeah, for sure. I've uh, I recently reviewed the double cask, but I, I would oh, you already happy, did. Okay, I'd be happy to get another bottle because I I quite enjoyed it and it's relatively cheap. Um, it's a pretty good whiskey. And if you wanted to do something a little different, they do have a twelve. I, I think that might be an older. Let me see something. That's like an old bottle. Looks like. Never mind. Screw that. No, we don't want to do that. Maybe. Uh, and you already did the Victoriana recently too, right? I haven't, no, but I would be, I would totally be game to taste it. Victoriana is one of the most like beguiling whiskeys that I've had. Like it is so, every time I drink it, I can't quite like put my finger on it. That would be a fun one to, to do live because yeah, it just has so many, so many different layers of intrigue, <laughs> if that's a good way to put it. I would be happy. Have you had it before? I have I had my own bottle a while back. It's been a few years though. So if you go ahead and try to get the Victoriana, if you'd rather have that one, I'll try to find the 18 at least, if not like a 25, if I can find a good price on it, and then we could do a Glen Scotia deal. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I'm totally game for that. It's been a while since I've had the uh, either one and the 18. I'd love to have my own bottle of, especially if it is, it, you know, sherry influence, and I didn't get the sherry out of it the first run. That would make me kind of sad that I missed out on it, really. <laughs> yeah, I'm game, man. Um, we could definitely do that. I mean, we have a couple good tastings coming up still, like, this year. I was actually just going to – if you're good with it, I'm going to take a quick moment to share with folks what they can expect on the Tasty Tuesday Telex and Malt Show. Yeah, so then next, week, next week we got Anoc 12 and Anoc 18. Then we're also going to be doing Lecheg 10 and Lecheg 18. We're going to be doing Benromic Organic and Benromic 15, Artbeg 10, and then uh, a comparison of the Artbeg Black Committee release versus the other one. Like we got, we got some fun, fun tastings to do uh, coming up over the next couple months <laughs> or the next month and a half. So uh, I hope folks will, uh, you know, take a second, give us a thumbs up if you haven't. Um, Subscribe, uh, subscribe to Telex the Whiskey Tech and Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. If you're not yet a subscriber, um, we do this every Tuesday, and you know, love hanging out and chatting about whiskey, and appreciate all your support. Yeah, it'll be fun to do. We also got some uh, interesting uh, McCallans and McAdam, uh, Glen Caddams and uh, Deanstons and all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a, a really big fun couple months, and I've got a couple ideas to go over with you on the uh a couple other ones i was doing some recon on the side and i found a really good price believe it or not on a tomato 30 
So, Whoa. yeah, I was like, wow, is that, if I can get it for that, then I might actually try to snag it. So uh, be on the lookout for a tomat in like a, a 12 or, or something that you've always kind of wanted to try. And uh, I've also found a possible good price on a, a Budenhaven 25, but it's a little it's a little up there. It'll be down the oh, road. Man, a little bit. The 25, the elusive Buna 25. Yeah. <laughs> That's on my radar. I've got my radar. That's on my radar. And that, that whiskey's always on my radar. And every time I see it, I'm like, I, I just can't spend that much. <laughs> it's, it is a lot. Uh, I'm I'm kind of I'm 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 kind of doing some planning though in the future. Maybe next month in November, I might be able to yeah. pick something up like that. So uh, think about a Bunahaven if you uh, don't want to do the twelve or uh, something like that. Maybe something different uh, Bunahaven wise. If uh, maybe think you know about. You know what I do have, and we could probably discuss cracking. I have a Bunahaven the Moynia. Nah, it's nine years old. It's the um, uh, Bordeaux cast. Yeah, that would be awesome, man. That would be awesome. As I haven't had a Bordeaux cask of a Bunahaven at all. Yeah, I also and, have a 10-year-old Manzanilla cask. And I never tried any of their Moin series, which I've been wanting to for a long time. So this will be – it'll kill two birds with one stone on the Moin uh, series. Two birds on. with one crumb. There you go. <laughs> and that's that's the – if I'm not mistaken, the Moin is the repeated series, right? Uh yes. If I'm not mistaken, no. I, well, or is it very? Probably have some peated, some not peated. Yeah, maybe. I know what I honestly I can't tell you. I'm, I don't know. Um, I, I think you're right, but I don't recall completely. I forgot what the. Let me look up something real fast because I in the chat if you know what's up with the Moinia because there's like a straight up Moinia that they've released before. I think and then so. Like a series of other Moinias. There's a lot. It's like a series, and if I'm not mistaken, it, it means um, one second. Um, Benahaven Limited batch of the Moinia, 310 bottles. This was back in, uh, let's see, 46.3 percent. Oh man, it doesn't have it there. I know. It, I, I used to remember what it meant, but I forgot. Let me see something. I thought it would had something to do with being peated, but don't quote me on it. Is it, yeah, that's the peated one. Okay, yeah, I have a feeling that most of their monias are the uh, like a like like their more peated uh, series. Is this uh, silver lock? Is it kind of like a Port Charlotte is to Brook Lottie? Is that what the monia series is like? I can't remember if it's that high or not. I'm, I'm kind of looking on the side here. They do have a lot, man. They, they go they go back to like old Fischl releases for the Munya French Oak finish. They have a Oloroso finish uh, for 2018, a Port Pipe Munya finish 2017. But I think they are the more heavily peated uh, offerings, I believe. I remember the Crook Vona was was kind of yeah, um, that was the travel exclusive. That was real, quite good. The the peated the heavily peated one with the Crook Vona, yeah. I like that one a lot. And the Aaron Negrena, the red wine cast finish one was pretty decent too. That's one that I was not actually, it's, it's funny. We were talking about before, like, you know, Holland Park and uh, Beaumont and some of these guys have these really robust travel retail exclusive releases everywhere. And sadly, some of them are hit and miss. And even Talisker has got some hit and misses. I mean, they all, they all do. But I will tell you, I've had the Ankle Doc, the Krukvona and the Erina Grena. And I think all those are all travel retails, and they were all actually really solid, really good. I've yet to have a bad Bunahaven on the uh, travel retail side, thank God. <laughs> Has anyone ever had a bad Bunahaven that they did not like? Uh, and I've had their, like, their 13 Marsala. I've had the uh, 18, 12, 3 there. Kalbanak, Choichik, one and two. I've never had a bad Benahav that I can remember. Have you ever had one that you were kind of like, eh? Um. Hmm. I don't think so. Uh, I haven't had. Let me think. I haven't had any of some of their NAS releases. So, I, yeah, I can't say I've had a bad one, but I've also not had a ton of them either. Well, I really like Bunahavens 
course. Yeah, yeah. the only one that was kind of a letdown on the NAS is that Kalbanak with the finish, but the nose and the palette were so good. It kind of reminds me a lot of the Tamdu 10. It has a really good nose and, fin and, and palette. The finish was a letdown, but it was still a solid 3.5 out of 5. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I don't think there's a bad Benahav in Donner Pass says, so I think everyone's in agreement on that one pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, the 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 Kalbanak, the Choi Chick in this three day all peed. That's true. Those are peed. The 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 Moina was the one I think that might be a little more peated than some of the other ones, but I can't remember if that's the case. Kind of like a Port Charlotte version of um Right, right. Yeah, Krokvana. I don't recall either. I mean, because the, the Krakvana wasn't a Moina. Um, but I think Moina might just be their regular releases, but I'm sure there's somebody who's less ignorant about this than us in the chat. Oh, Welsh Toro. Maybe Welsh Toro knows what's Ooh. up. 10 Colorosa Sherry Bomb, man. That sounds good. That is crazy. Yeah, I was trying to see if there was any other. The most expensive Bomor I tried tasted way too smoky, ashtray like. Huh. I'm not surprised with that. That's It's kind of one of those. Um, Whiskey's that's hit and miss for me on the uh, distiller. Bomore. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really spend much time with Bomore. CS cast strength. Oh wow, the UK. I bet that's really good. Could you imagine a Buna having eighteen cast strength? Wow, <laughs> that would be something else, man. Haven't had a bad Bomore. Oh, there's D uh, Dustin. Good to see you, man. Nothing under one point one out of five. I uh, can't relate to three point five where it's. 200 plus plus quality <laughs> yeah if if we rate rate something as a as a four dustin will probably rate it around a three so whatever he does bump it up one for us and then whatever we do <laughs> one away for him and yeah, it'll be about uh, the same. Yeah, it's all about the scale yeah it's about how you weigh the scale I had one weird bottle of Benahaven 12. Tasted way too metallic. Gave a sample and tried another Benahaven 12 a year later, and the newer purchase was so much better. So I guess I bought a bad batch. Huh. Wow. That's, that's, that's one thing I've never ha I've been lucky enough to never have a bad version of Benahaven 12. But uh, I have had that happen where I bought a bottle like a Springbank. Like a, I think it might have been an 18 or 15. I can't remember which one it was. But something was just a little off with it. And it's not cork taint. It's not like there's, you know, it, it had a bad seal that where the, you know, it got overly oxidized, I don't think. But I do sometimes think that sometimes you just get really unlucky with these batches. It's just, have you ever had that happen before on yours? Well, I, I, I tend to think so. Like, I think that there's probably been times where the batch variation just didn't quite reach it. But I'll be honest, it's sometimes it's really hard to tell. Maybe that Glen Scotia that we got that one time, that was kind of a... <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's a whole... Mr. Cloudy is a whole different animal. <laughs> that That is... It's it's, an, uh, it's a thing unto itself. Yeah. Cooper's Choice been having 24. Wow. 12, 79 pounds. Wow. Yeah, those days are long over, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Jesus. Uh, that's that's amazing. The 71 is the other wow black art. Now... It looks like Dustin's talking about the 4.1, which I do love. Yeah, I've the 4.1 is ridiculous. I've had the 5, and it wasn't as good as the 4. I, I tried the 6, I want to say, and I don't remember it being as good either. I have not had this new um, this new 7, and it looks like Dustin's a big fan of the 7 as well. And the 8.1 just came out. I'm yeah, wondering. I think the, first, the first four in the range, the first four were Jim McEwen because he was at Brooklady then, but now he's gone to go do uh, Ardmore. And five, and then after that is like the new master distiller, if I'm not wrong, I'm mistaken. Um, I've, yeah, I've had the 4.1, and yeah, I think it's probably one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. But uh, I've heard great things about um, the 6.1 and the 7.1. Wow, he thinks the seven might even be a little better than the four. That's 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 actually it's, it's surprising in some ways, and in some ways it's not. But I'm glad to see. I love it when you get a favorite whiskey like that four, and and it's like you know, it's selling for six seven hundred dollars now. It's a right, seven. right, right. But if you can find something that's a new, release. two more uncorked bottles of it. So. 
Oh, you bastard! I got, save one for me, and I'll I'll buy it from you. Seriously. Oh yeah, for sure. I also have uh, I have a bottle that's like half filled, so I, we could do a sample. We could do a Brooklady Black Art Night. I've been wanting to get my own bottle of the four point one Black Arts for so long. I just never did pull the trigger on it, and now unless I find that seven, I'm probably screwed. So if you do ever feel like selling one, let me know, and I'll definitely will. I will. I'll take you up on it because that's one thing that I've always wanted to have for my collection is a Brooklady. 23 year old black uh black arts man that would be insane mm-hmm. <laughs> i need to buy a seven yeah, one it is still available you need it in your life at least that if i can't find the four or if uh if you don't want to sell it i'll probably be lucky maybe to find a new seven but it might not be as easy as i'm thinking either i can guarantee you a sample i'm not sure i want to sell it i got gotcha. you i might keep those other two bottles for like you know the rest of my life type deal you know <laughs> He's asking, well, a different bottle of the same kind of scotch always tastes the same. No, uh, the batches of variations do make a big change. And it, sometimes it, it's a lot more than others. Like Springbank is is very uh, yeah. crafty, artisan. So they all their whiskeys taste different year to year. Even if you get a Springbank 10 and get a new Springbank 10 the following year, it's it, it could be a lot different. Um some whiskeys, though, like the Glenjornic 12 is typically, unless it is like the old version from like 1980 or 90, it's not going to be that much different from batches to batches. But yeah. it just depends, I think, on the release. Like the we were talking about the Lafroy cast strength uh, earlier. That one definitely has a, a batch variation every year. Yeah, agreed. I mean, and but they also like advertise that it's a different batch. Like I think, I think what you said is true there are better batches than others of like standard releases. So like, you know, you're, they, the, a lot of these distilleries for the mass produced standard release stuff, I think try to like keep it as close as possible. Uh, but there's always going to be a little bit of batch variation. And I think sometimes it's significant and there's a lot of controversy about whether or not like when a distillery changes its branding and labeling that they accelerate their yard, they change their, uh, uh, the quality of the whiskey for better or for worse. I think that's like somewhat debatable. Uh, some folks will guarantee that that's true. Others are like, it's hit and miss. Others say it never happens. But yeah, I mean, I think that like, if you're going out and shopping and you want a Highland Park 12 or a Glenlivet 12, you can expect relative consistency. One of the big, big ones for me was the um, when I was getting into Sherry Bombs at the very beginning, one of the ones I gravitated towards right away was the uh, Abelar Abana, which has many, 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 many batches. And yeah, uh, yeah. I was lucky enough to have a 52, I think it was, and it was spot on glorious. And I got it for like under 100 bucks, and it was just what my favorite whiskey at the time. This was like four years ago at Christmas time. And then sure enough, you know, I liked it enough to get another bottle, but the next time I bought it, it was a 63 instead of a 52. And let's just say that it was not anywhere near the same whiskey. Yeah. I mean, but they're also explicit about like, this is a different batch. Yeah. I think that there's like subtlety when it's like a core range thing, but yeah, I agree with you. I mean, Aberlour is not one of my go-to distilleries by any stretch, but uh, the Abuna obviously is an exception because it's, it is quite good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'll agree with uh, I agree with uh, Malt on, on this one. Unless usually, thankfully, exactly. the, the distillery is going to make a huge shift on marketing if they do do a drastic change. And a good example of this, I think, is when uh, Highland Park decided to go from the twelve and start doing the whole Viking series thing. I think there was a slight difference with the maybe the overall core juice, but it wasn't enough to make you think twice about buying the Highland Park 12. You know what I mean? It's different yeah, than maybe with the sulfur level or the heather level, that kind of stuff. It might be like subtle changes, but if you like it and you buy it now versus five years ago, I don't think you're going to notice a huge enough difference where you're going to be like, oh, I can't, you know, I don't want to get that anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. And just if you're, I don't know if you're subbed to my channel, but I did a whiskey review probably early in this year where I compared a Highland Park Viking Honor to a Highland Park 12. Um, check that out if you haven't seen it before. I mean, I think 
there was a difference, but it was like batch variation, not some like calculated attempt by the distillery to like destroy their whiskey. But right, it's hard to tell. Like I couldn't just say it definitively. But yeah, check that out if you're interested. Um, yeah, I did see that. That is a good. That is a good episode. The um... and I like. I mean, for the record, like I love me some Highland Park Twelve. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, even the Viking Honor, like I don't. I don't care. Highland yeah, Park that... is a perfect whiskey for so many, so many distinct moments. Yeah, thankfully, if you get a Holland, you know, I'm sorry, a Lafroy 10, just the basic one now versus even 10 years ago, I wouldn't think the basic one would be that much different, but the batch variation one, we're definitely going to be able to tell later on when the when Malt gets his uh, his old patches out at some point. I bet yeah, you're going to love that one. Man. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it for sure. I'm going to send you uh, a sample of the like I think it'll either be batch three or batch four or whatever one, and then we'll we'll compare it to the new one and and see what happens. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. I'll be I mean, for the record, like I think Lafroy Ten Cast Strength is fantastic, but uh, no matter what, but that this is going to be the real test of like how great it used to be versus what it is now. <laughs> I wonder if um, we were talking about Kilhoman a little earlier. I wonder if Kilhoman has any aged regular releases now. Have you seen any like ten or twelve year old? Releases? I haven't. Not not core range. Um, Andrew Page sent me a really great sample. It's a fourteen year old single cast sherry or a single cast bourbon, um, and like they have a lot of those. But I don't think there's anything in their core range that has a specific age statement. I think eventually there might be though. I, mean, you know, I wonder why that is, because I have seen, like you just mentioned, the 14-year-old, like, specialized releases. Right, like, why don't you like, like, Mock or Bay 10? Yeah, I wonder why you don't see a, a, a regular Lockgorm 10 or a Sinead 10 or that kind of thing. Yeah. If, if they're holding back for some reason or if uh, maybe they're just selling, like, hotcakes to the point where they can't keep up with with keeping any juice to have age anymore. That'd be sad if that's the case. Right, right, right. Totally. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I do have some mock. I do, and this is another thing we should do eventually. Like I have uh, a cast strength mocker bay. And to, to trade you, uh, we'll do like a Kilhoma show uh, eventually, and I'll I'll throw it in the next set of samples we do maybe in a month or two. But I've, I did pick up those both those slightly peated Kilhomans. One's a sherry and, mm -hmm. one's, and one's a bourbon, and they're both Jack Rose picks. So those will be, if we, if you want to yeah, do that with the Buckyard Bay, that would be really nice. Yeah, that would be fun. I haven't, I haven't even touched them yet. They're not opened yet, but I'm really eager to see what a slightly <laughs> peated version of Kilhoman's going to taste like because it might be really damn good. You never know, you know, because they're, they're, their regular core they're, juice is pretty good. And if they're Jack Rose picks, I mean, you know, come on. At the end of the day, like the Sherry one especially, like Jack Rose pick, I mean, if, if anybody here has been to Jack Rose, you know what's up. Yeah, I still haven't been yet. Yeah, you you need to. I mean, living living that close for so long, like my God, man, uh, you like put five hundred bucks in your pocket <laughs> and prepare to just go and do a whiskey thing because Jack Rose is second to none in terms of getting to try rare whiskeys, stuff that you'll never find anywhere. It, it's it's a magical place. I have to go there when I, I uh, when I'm ready to splurge one day. That's gonna. Then be you can go down the street afterwards, uh, <laughs> and and get yourself some food at uh, at there's like a bunch of classic DC restaurants, especially if you like the um, you know oh God I'm forgetting the name of it now the 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 DC hot dog which I'm uh, the half smoke. Oh, it's, oh get, yeah, yeah. You want to get a good half smoke at that famous ass place on the street, man. You gotta do it. Okay. <laughs> Ben's Chili Bowl is a little place. Bowl, yeah. The original one on U Street. It's like That's the one I know. Away. Yeah, it's like three blocks away from Jack Rose. Like, you got to do it. When we, I was in a band back in the day, uh, we used to play at the Black Cat main stage and stuff. It was pretty oh, fun. Yeah. Black Cat. yeah. I was playing bass in a band back uh 2005 area, and that was pretty fun, man. I used to, to go out and hang out in those places, but never went to Jack Rose. And I, it's funny, I was really, really cl that close to going to meet some friends up there uh, pre-COVID, but it never it never happened, and I never got a chance to go. So uh, we, we definitely, as soon as the shit's over with, we're definitely getting our asses up there some way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, uh, yeah, my, my time in Philly um could be finite 
I mean, yeah. like I said, I'm going to be in LA for at least a month after uh, I'm going to fly out on Sunday. I don't know if I'm going there or if I'm going to Milwaukee. I don't know yet. Um, it's all a big kind of surprise, but yeah, I will, uh, you know, I would love to, hopefully the stars will align. And if I end up leaving here in six months, like things will be better by then and we can do it because you and I would have a fucking hoot at Jack Rose, man. Oh my God. <laughs> like when you order a whiskey, like when you ask to like see their whiskey selection at Jack Rose, you get a binder that I'm not even kidding is like that thick. That's awesome. Man. I have, they have an unbelievable collection. When I go in there online, they, thankfully they do have their stuff online as well. And I'll go and I'll kind of just glance and see. And yeah. I'll, I'll see things like the Ardbeg Erdnan based and some of these things that you yeah, don't see. Yeah, totally, totally. I'm like drooling down the side of my mouth just thinking, <laughs> man, if, if I went there, my wife wouldn't want to talk to me for like two or three days. After <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you might as well just like plan on like preempting that and telling her like, look, I'm going to go do some like stupid shit tonight. Uh, you just got to roll with it. Yeah, uh, just don't look at the credit card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's all in the interest of my hobbies. <laughs> oh, man. I will definitely be going at the first of the month at some point and spending a definitely sure, a fun man. night that one. For sure, wow. man. All right, Alex. All right, yeah, we gotta wrap it up, guys. But it's been it's been fun as always. It always flies by, and uh, I wish it, Tuesday like went on tomorrow too. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, uh, it's been a lot of fun, and enjoyed this Tamdu. Thank you for the sample. Um, and next week we'll get into some Anak. That'll be a lot of fun. We got some. Um, we'll be offline on Tuesday, November third. But we'll well at least I will be. But we'll be back. Um, doing the ta Tasty Tuesday Telex and Malt Show the week after with some Lechegs and a couple other things. So a lot of exciting uh, stuff coming up. And, you know, before you bounce out for the night, do hit that do hit that thumbs up uh, if you enjoyed the show. And if you're not subscribed, hit up Telex, the Whiskey Tech and Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. We appreciate all your support. Um, this is a lot of fun. Definitely. I'm not sure what I'll be doing that week of the uh, third that you'll be out, but if uh, if you're interested, send me an email at telex at outlook.com and let me know if you want to have us a, a spur of the moment show. We can just uh, sit and talk, a, okay. pick a whiskey and just do it. You never know. <laughs> just, yeah, for, just, for, just for a week and uh, Maul will be back the following week and we already have enough shows to go on for a couple months and we already got a, a couple more planned after that. So it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't wait. It. It'll be a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Glad to have you back in the saddle this week, my friend. Glad oh, yeah. Good. I'm so and, sorry uh, about missing last week. No, man. it's all good, man. Uh, I just, you know, I did a two hour happy hour and it was fun. So, uh, yeah, no, um, this is always a great time. And uh, until next week, I, I will be beaming you the signal from across the continent in Los Angeles. So this will be, oh, man. Gonna be, uh, it's going to be a little earlier for me than normal, but, you know, we'll do it. Uh, well, please stay fun. safe. <laughs> I will. I will, my friend. If I, it gets I, tough, just let me know. I know how it goes sometimes when if you need a break, especially when you're traveling back and forth. and all Yeah, that. yeah, for sure, for sure. But, but uh, we'll work it out. Yeah, it'll be fun, and uh, I'll have the uh, all the samples we need ready, and we'll get into it. Well, right, so much guys. I really appreciate it. Subscribe, thumbs up, and see you guys next Tuesday for sure. And I might even, I've got a couple samples from uh, Kenny and Steven that we've been holding on for months that we haven't touched yet. So I might do a little, a little side show on the side. I'll try to give you a heads up if I can via Twitter. Uh, if we do do a show, if it's, it, we might not, it might just be like a, just a quick tasting or something, but we'll figure out something. See you guys for now. All right, man. Peace out, brother. Stay well. Everybody else be well.